down the escalators. Welcome to the studio tour. We're at a five minute wait at the moment. The tour is about 45 minutes to an hour. While you're waiting in that line, make sure you grab a pair of 3D glasses. You'll be out there, like I said, for about 45 minutes to an hour. So be prepared for that. We do have restrooms down here. You can also bring snacks and drinks on board with you if you want to do that. If you want to eat and drink while you're on the tour. Everybody, we're leaving the theme park behind and we're heading down to a real working movie studio. Here to help me get things started while well, you met me, you met your driver. Uh, let's time to introduce my co host. You might know him from this night show, you might know him from that my jam. But, ladies and gentlemen, folks, friends, and moviegoers of all ages, may I present the one, the only, Mr. Jimmy Fallon. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy. Dimitri. And the greatest driver. Juan. They're the best. I love that. Even though... Dimitri. <gasps> no. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. All right, well, Mr. Fallon makes a good point. I've got some safety rules to go over, starting off with the screens that say, warning. Now, folks, these screens will never, ever be in 3D. I promise I will let you know when to wear those 3D glasses, but for now, they're not currently needed. They don't make the greatest pair of sunglasses anyway. Much rather save you the trouble. Now, if you need any sort of guest assistance or have a medical emergency, or let's say you drop something of value off the side of the tram, or have any sound or video issues, just reach up and grab that red cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it is safe for me to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated to keep all hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. And remember to use that red cord above your head if you need any sort of assistance. The studio is private property, so if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull that cord and then remain seated at all times. Please no smoking and or vaping of any kind during the studio tour, and be prepared. Our tour today will feature loud noises, sudden tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. So you want to have some cameras out for some great photo opportunities, but please keep an eye on those cameras so they don't get wet. And finally, for your safety and those around you, please no selfie sticks or flash photography on board the train. With all of this out of the way, we're making our way down the Universal Studios timeline. 
And let me give you a brief history of our studio. Universal Studios Hollywood is over 109 years old at this point in time. It all goes back to when our founder Carl Levely invited the public to the studio to see how movies were made. And in the early days, guests could walk from set to set. They could marvel at the new technology involved in filmmaking. But with the invention of sound and the need for quiet on the set, the original walking tour ended, which brings us to our 60th anniversary glamour train. Back in the 1960s, specifically 1964, the new company chairman of Universal, Lou Wasserman, uh, and executives Al Dorskin and Jay Stein, they had the idea of reviving the studio tour, but this time involving buses. So the Great Light bus tours that used to run around Hollywood, they would drop people off here at the Universal Studios lot. In the old days of the tour, there were two tour guides, there were two drivers, and there were only five tours per day, and each tour only held 67 people, so it was a very small operation. We've obviously grown and changed and expanded a lot over the last 60 years. And since uh, we opened the studio over 100 years ago, well, a lot of filming has happened in that time. Now, you never know who or what you're going to see here on the Universal Studios lot, so let's see where the tour will take us today. And our first stop, or really our first pass by, is over by Sound Stage number 12. Now, Sound Stage number 12 is one of our biggest and oldest sound stages. Uh, it's where the voice filmed for a number of years, seasons 1 through 20. And to give you an idea of just how big and how old that building is to your left-hand side, take a look to your screens for a few notable productions that have filmed there over the years. So all the environments that you just saw on screen, they start to ground up inside these large, empty warehouse-like spaces we call sound stages. And over to your right-hand side, the area that is now known as Super Nintendo World, they used to have sound stages right here as well. But again, we've grown, expanded, and changed quite a bit over the years. Now in order to transform these empty warehouse-like spaces into the sets that you know and love, for instance, something like the Hoonville Village or the Grinch Who Stole Christmas, there's a lot of hard work and customization that goes into bringing these sets to life. Every single detail has been placed there by a real-life human being. And in order to, uh, well, transform these sound stages, not only is there everything that goes on inside the buildings, but there can also be additional vehicles, trailers, services like hair, makeup, wardrobe that have to be mobile transported from public location to public location. As we travel a little bit further though, with a, a look into our past, the real question is who's been filming here recently. As we get here at Filming, folks, uh, we are looking for something as we travel through the lot. This is what we call a work day here in the studio. We have TV shows, like over to your left-hand side, Bel Air, films inside of sound stage number 14. And on the side of each one of these buildings, we have a little red light that can be turned on that lets us know it happens production is in the area. So if I do happen to put this graphic that you see on the screen randomly up, well that's just because we pass it to a zone of active filming, so do be aware. As I was saying, we have a lot of TV shows filming in the area. Over to your left, we have Bel Air, starring Jabari Banks and Aldi Schulzen. We recently had HBO's Hacks, starring Emmy Award winner Gene Smart, Apple TV series Loot, starring Maya Rudolph. You might have heard of the show based on a uh, true story, now streaming on Peacock, as well as the new TED TV series starring Seth MacFarlane from the Fuzzy Door Production Company, and even a new show for the producers of The Good Place, Michael Schur, the show stars Ted Danson, and it's called A Classic Spy that will be streaming on Netflix in a few months' time. But here's the thing, folks, even though companies like HBO, Apple TV, Hulu, Amazon Prime, any company that we might work with, even though they might not call our lot home directly, that's not a limiting factor when it comes to bringing your favorite stories to life because we are, after all, part of a larger filmmaking family. And I thought we'd take a look behind the scenes with one of our members of that larger filmmaking family. This is Seth MacFarlane's Fuzzy Door Productions and the new TED TV series, now on Peacock. Hi everyone, Seth MacFarlane here, and I'm excited to share with you a behind-the-scenes look at my Peacock original event series, TED. It's a prequel series set in 1993. That means our skilled artists who had to build a high school, and even recreate downtown Boston as it looked back in the day using exterior sets and facades that you're about to see on the floor. But I should warn you, Ted is intended for mature audiences only. So grown-ups, tell the kids to go in the other room before you watch. Oh, come on! Bring, 
Bringing any one of these stories to life, folks, requires a lot of planning. And while there are a lot of companies that we work with, that we plan with, that do not call our lot home, we actually have quite a few notable production companies that work alongside us in the production bungalows coming up to your left-hand side. You might have heard of Outer Bank Entertainment behind the CW's Vampire Diary, as well as the TV series Dawson Creek. Maybe you're a fan of musicals like La La Land, Dear Evan Hansen, or maybe you like the Scott Pilgrim vs. the World movie. That's all from the Plot Production Company, and their office will be coming up to your left-hand side. Keep an eye out for the Wicked Bubble statue. That's because they're working on Wicked Part 1, starring Ariana Grande as Clint of the Kid, scheduled to come out in November of this year. Even further on, we have the old Alfred Hitchcock bungalow. Keep an eye out to your left for number 5195. That's where the unfathomable director established a very long-lasting legacy of psychological horror and terror over the years, with some of the titles now passing on your screens. The legacy of terrifying audiences is continued to this day by the company behind NBC's TV series Hannibal, the Dina De Laurentiis company. But as you move on forward, no matter who these companies are, no matter where they're working from, they all take part in the same important planning, budgeting, scripting, making sure that craft services is arranged for your cast and crew, and then the actual filming can begin. And while a lot of the filming happens in our front lot sound stages, like over to your left-hand side, in sound stages 25, we have Lopez, Lopez vs. Lopez, starring George Lopez alongside his real-life daughter, Mayan Lopez. And over in sound stage number 26, we have a new show called St. Dennis Medical, a single cam documentary about life inside an underfunded hospital from the creators of Superstore as well as American Auto. But like I said, once all the details have been ironed out, then the actual filming can begin. And a lot of that filming can also happen to your right-hand side in our back lot set. That's exactly where we're heading right now. We've made it all the way here to the Metropolitan set. And these four acres of shell sets and facades can play really anywhere in the entire world without ever leaving the Universal Studios lot. The reason being, well, most of these buildings look like what you see on screen on the inside. This is the inside of a shell set and facade. But with a little bit of movie magic, with a little bit of editing, we can convince you that quite a few different fictional characters live here, like Mindy Lahiri at the Mindy Project. She lived in the Brownstone Street Apartments over to your right-hand side. And Jim Carrey lived inside the same block of apartments in the movie, Bruce Almighty. Raise the door! Raise the door! Raise the door! So, I'm going to quote what Mr. Carey just said, inside bad, outside good. That's a general summary of how we use these fake buildings around us. And as we turn the corner, we're about to pass by one of the most famous fake buildings here in the back lot. Looks a little bit different these days, but folks, if you are able to time travel, you might recognize this area as the iconic Hill Valley from Back to the Future. Or maybe you might recognize it as Kings and Falls from the Gremlins. And, well, you'll definitely recognize the time machine from Back to the Future to your left hand side. Also, check out that goose over there. That goose is real. It's not a paid actor. He's a star. Well, aside from that goose big chillin' over on the lawn, uh, this area has been featured in its modern state in the new TED TV series. This block to your left-hand side with the uh, little red corner store, if you're a fan of the Good Place TV series, that's where Chidi uh, dies with the air conditioner. That's where I get, that's where I get him. Yes, it was filmed right here. Uh, it's one of my favorite shows. I'm gonna have to give a little shout-out. And as we turn the corner, folks, if you'd like to catch our current court elsewhere, there are many more projects coming up, including episodes of the TV series, Bel Air, so much more. But we're moving on forward to our big New York Street. Welcome back to an area that you might have recently seen on TV series like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, playing the city of Brooklyn or New York. Uh, you might have also recently seen this area of downtown Los Angeles and American Ninja Warriors semifinals. And, uh, well, maybe you saw it quite a few years back in time in a movie like The Blue Brothers. But no matter where it's playing, what really matters is the decor, the way we dress up our sets. And here to show you exactly what I mean, someone who's no stranger to a big city, my co-host, Jimmy Dunn. Hey, So it's 
not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro set. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. When it comes to this blank canvas of a set, the only limit is your imagination. Now, we are moving on from the not-so-concrete jungle over to the real jungle of Skull Island, director Peter Jackson's 2005 King Kong. It's the original King Kong that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV in the day, about eight or nine years old. And I wanted to get one of the things that I wanted to do. Before we return to Skull Island, take this opportunity, folks, to secure your personal belongings, your wallets, your watches, your phones, your keys, anything and everything you brought with you to the park today. Please do not stand. Please do not use flash photography. And finally, brace yourselves when we return to Skull Island. Studio tour 
the audience is in the middle of the environment. They're looking in all directions. There's creatures coming at them. They're seeing coming from this side. And there's T-Rexes on the other side. They can move. You know, you can move. Modifications are important, folks. The way in which our filmmakers change up those vehicles to help them tell their stories, or just to make them a little bit easier to work with, like the gyrosphere from Jurassic World. But while I have you on the topic of Jurassic, folks, well... Welcome to Jurassic Park. With some new additions to the wildlife, folks, we are heading back to a little island off the coast of Costa Rica. We have some original props and set pieces from the original trilogy. Over to your right-hand side, aw, a friendly little guy on a boat. Well, that is a boat that was featured in the Lost World Jurassic Park. And over to your left-hand side is the mobile lab, used to research these friendly creatures. Now, the mobile lab is another picture car that is mostly made out of wood, uh, as are some of these cages. Oh, look at these little guys. They I promise you, they're very intelligent creatures, folks. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, all right, all right. They, they like to sing. Uh, they're very talented. Please tell them that you think so. And this... So let's see who can make some harmonies with the wildlife. See if you know your lines as well. You guys uh, ready to sing it? Okay, here we go. Don't worry, I'm going to count you in. Here we go. And... No, I don't think we were ready that time. Don't worry, we'll come back to it later. For now, I want to show you one more dinosaur attack, this time a dinosaur attack that appeared on screen. So for a little bit of context, that is not a real cliff on that screen, folks. That is a parking garage that we passed earlier today in the Universal Studios front lot. Next to sound station number 14. But uh, the thing is, you know, even if we're filming outdoors and we customize the outsides of our buildings, much like the insides of our sound stages, it kind of begs the question, where did all that rain come from? Because as you well know, it never ever rains here in sunny Southern California. And even when it does rain, well, it's not exactly reliable. So rather than, you know, waiting around for the next perfect storm to pass us by, we will oftentimes take matters into our own hands. And in a manner of speaking, this is how we can control the weather at the press of a button. Because here's how this works. This practical effect is only three very simple ingredients. It's a little bit of lightning from a strobe light back towards cars three and four, thunder from speakers all surrounding us, and then there's the rain itself, which comes from our top secret industry technology known as sprinklers. I know, very top secret. But this effect here has been running since 1968. Yeah. That's as old as my dad. So the really cool thing about a practical effect like this is that you need no post-production editing, no CGI, uh, no additional sound or foley. All you need is your phone or any sort of camera to start recording, and you've got a completely realistic rainstorm on your hands. Oh, and folks, Car One's got the right idea. Make some oohs and get ready to make some ahs while we're at it. Congratulations on surviving the flash flood. Now, more recently than 1968, you might have seen this effect in Lady Gaga's music video, Judas, or the movie Big Fat Liar, starring Paul Giamatti, Frankie Muniz, and Amanda Bynes. We could dress them up and have six different productions going on at once, and because there was no sound in these movies, 
the original studio tour, you sat on bleachers and you cheered for your favorite actors. And one of my favorite details about the Western sets here is before the advent of digital editing and technology, you'd have to use another type of practical effect, this time of a technique called forced perspective. If you look towards either side of the road, you'll notice some really oddly sized doors. To your left hand side, some very small doors. To your right hand side, some set down, and as we do, we're following in the footsteps of many famous cowboys like Clint Eastwood, James Stewart, and even modern cowboys like Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt in Quentin Tarantino's night film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. As we turn the corner, take a look to your left-hand side, that's Sound Stages 30 and through 33, where we're working on season 25 of The Voice, and we also have our beautiful park link, which I'll talk about in just a moment, because we're reaching the halfway point of our tour. Just a reminder for everybody to please stay seated during the entire tour. The studio is private property, so if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull that cord and then remain seated at all times. For now though, over to your left hand side, Park Lake has a different name. Uh, it's also known as Hollywood's Ocean. It was featured in a movie in the 70s called The Ten Commandments for the parting of the Red Sea effect that used to be here on the studio tour. You might have also seen it in a little show called The Good Place starring Kristen Bell and Ted Danson. Or maybe you saw it as the Amazon River in The Creature from the Black Lagoon, which is celebrating- Are you serious? Oh. Are you going in? Are you going in? I don't know what that is. Uh, let's try that again. And to your right hand side, this is where the classic monster movies got their start. Bella Lugosi's Dracula, Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera, Lon Chaney Jr.'s The Wolfman. But more recently than the monster movies, you might recognize this as a, well, not quite the good place, but at least neighborhood 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 West. Let's see if that brings it up. Location, the afterlife. Come on, I've never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Hey, well, maybe it's not all that bad. Yeah. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Here in the daylight, Little Europe is colorful, it's charming, it's downright delightful. Uh, you've even seen it in Disney productions like The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement, made for TV musicals like Roger and Hammerstein's ABC, or, or Roger and Hammerstein's Cinderella star Brandy and Whitney Houston on ABC. But if you take away all the bright, charming colors and, for instance, added in a mob of angry villagers in this courtyard to your right hand side, well, you have a recipe for a classic monster like Boris Karloff's Frankenstein, which was built there nearly 100 years ago. folks, and we love every way in which we thrilled our audiences. Whether it was the silent westerns, the monster movies, the musicals of the 40s, the comedies of the 50s, Alfred Hitchcock's psychological thrillers of the 60s. That around midway through the 70s, a then young director Steven Spielberg threw his hat to the ring with a now classic creature feature known as Jaws. We are heading up to our Amity Island. And I should tell you folks, Amity Island definitely has a bit of a shark problem, but the good news is, well, we sent one of our divers out into the water a little while ago. His name is George. I do think the shark problem is taken care of, so we can probably tell him to come back in. Uh, if, you, if you see him, that is. Oh. George.
Do you want to swim back to shore, bud? Well, I can't say I knew George Argyle very well, but he was a brave man. He certainly had guts. May he rest in many pieces, but don't worry. George's sacrifice has not been made in vain. In fact, it allows us to hide behind these very safe and totally non-flammable barrels of gasoline where nothing could go wrong. Between you and me, I, I wouldn't gaslight you guys about your safety, right? No. Congratulations on surviving Bruce the Shark. That's the hardest working shark in all of Hollywood. And we do ask that everybody remain completely seated for the entirety of our tour. Once again, please remain seated facing forward for your safety. Uh, but anyway, back to the story of John. So this is not the real Amity Island. The real Amity Island is on the east coast of the United States near a place called Martha's Vineyard. Uh, when the when the crew of John put the animatronic shark into the water, not only did it break down on the first day of filming, it also broke down again and again. It's over a hundred days where the delays have passed, but don't just take my word for it, take it from director Steven Spielberg himself. That's a much from the line shark. The shark is frustrated. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio mics. They were always saying, the shark is not working for me. The shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark were all up for a while there and things were going on. So I really owe the shark a lot. Now this might not be the real Amity Island, but it is, however, the real Cabot Cove for Murder, She Wrote, starring Angela Lansbury, where she played Jessica Fletcher, an Agatha Christie-style murder mystery writer. A little further on up the road, towards our suburban neighborhoods, to your right-hand side, that is the Chicken Ranch, from Dolly Parton's The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses, and even LMFAO's music video, Sorry for Party Rockin'. And one more sign that we're literally here in suburbia. Well, it is the Lion Estate signs that have been brought back for our 60th anniversary of the studio tour. And these originally were built for the 30th anniversary of Robert Zemeckis' Back to the Future trilogy. We're heading further on up the road and we're hitting the approximate 15 minute mark before the end of our tour. So just a reminder for everybody to please stay seated during the entire tour, the studio's private property. So if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull that cord and remain seated at all times. We will return to the theme park shortly. For now though, we're gonna take a little break with all the information. And I said we'd come back to it. I'm a man of my word. So we're gonna run some lines, folks. We're gonna see if you have studied them. But don't worry, I will count you in. So take a couple deep breaths, it's gonna be okay. Consider this your impromptu audition for The Voice. Okay, here we go. And five, six, seven, eight, and... I can't hear you now. A little louder, please. All right, everybody, now let's go see that girl. And watch that scene. We're digging the dancing queen. Oh, then cha-cha real smooth. Okay, now this road that we're driving on, it has two different names. Wilderness Drive, for the obvious reasons. You'll notice a lot of nature here at the area, but it's also named Steven Spielberg Drive. And it, it does pass through several Steven Spielberg sets, including passing right by the War of the World sets over to your left-hand side from the 2005 Paramount picture. If you take a look, you'll see the remains of a real-life Boeing 747 that'll be rejoining our tour route for our 60th anniversary celebration. 
For now, though, we're heading up to the set of another legendary director, this time the set of Nope from director Jordan Peele's uh, newest sci-fi thriller. This is Jupiter's Plane. These sets were designed by the brilliant Ruth de Jong, who you might have seen the recent work of uh, on the new Best Picture Award winner Oppenheimer. But this, this is Jordan Peele. Now, to guide us through on our Glamour Tram, director Jordan Peele himself. I hope you enjoy your stay at Jupiter's Plane. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible nation and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Plane, a nostalgic, small-time, Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky G. Park. Over there, look into the winking room and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie kids show. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Why? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy, a gold rush frontier town, lies a sinister scene. Spielberg's movie Jaws. We are shifting our gears, however, we're switching our lanes. We're about to head on into Sullivan's Truck Repair Garage to meet up with our Fast and Furious family on a very serious mission. But don't worry, you don't need your 3D glasses yet. In fact, you won't need them for the first two parts of the mission. All I need you to do right now is, uh, well, keep your eyes peeled for Roman Pierce and Letty Ortiz. They should be helping us out today before we get started. Oh, the gates are opening. Okay, we're going to see if anybody's home. Hey, yo, Roman, anybody in there? I know. I just got here. All right, I got it. But listen, hello, beautiful people, particularly you right there missing the third row. How are you doing? You good? <laughs> Name is Roman Pierce. Pleased to meet you. Buddy, I'm back to the stash. Sharp and rough. Right here, I'm sick and spot. You friends over, it's a little messy. It's so all good. The more the merrier. Especially you right there in the third row. That's what I'm saying. Look. So look, see over there? It's Hobbs Urban Assault Vehicle. Best truck the U.S. government can buy. That work of art back over there was made by my man Tej. Think of it as like a Mona Lisa on wheels. So did you break it down to them? What's that? You had one job to do, more than one. All right, look, guys, we're going to keep shopping finding you. But to keep you safe, we need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us here. So put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone could give us away. I need y'all to take this real serious. Okay, pull into the next bay and we'll meet you in there. So like I was saying, the third row, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the mission you still don't need your 3d glasses but i have a very serious question for everybody here today do you guys like like to party all right i was a little hesitant so let me ask a different way if you like to party can i get a all right that's a five out of ten i need you to bring it to an 11 out of 10 so one more time can i get a all right Back up a little bit. I got it. Slightly. 
First of all, I don't work for you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? Family. We don't work for nobody. Cop, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. I'll just escort this guy this out. Let's go, Cookie Puss. Got an ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm gonna know this guy. See what I'm talking about? Call you back. Man. It was on vibrate. Shaw sure, traced us. I just can't hold forever. Letty. Roman, we're up. Driver, move that vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. My Mona Lisa's all warmed up right next door. Roman, drive your truck. I need you and Daddy ready to roll. All right, Trainway, the time has come. Make sure you have those pretty glasses on. Here you're your first couple of off. Hold on real tight to something or someone. We're about to get fast and furious. Supercharged, but with that being said and done, well, we've done what there is to do and see today. So it's time for us to head back home to the theme park and wrap things up. So, to conclude, to summarize, and tie it all up with a bow, we here at Universal, we've been making movies and movie making magic for well over a hundred years. We make you laugh and cry and sit on the edge of your seat and tremble with anticipation. But it's not a solo adventure. Never has been, it never will be. And if you take a look over to your right hand side, once we pass the green fence, you will see an absolutely stunning view of the San Fernando, San Fernando Valley with some of our neighboring movie studios like Warner Brothers Pictures, Walt Disney Animation, and the ABC Studios Tower. But even just right here on the Universal Studios lot, aside from that larger family, there are hundreds of artists, employees, and workers that work thousands of hours to bring your favorite stories to life. Going all the way there, back to the very beginning of the studio tour from our first two drivers and guides. The reason we come here every day, the most important ingredient, well, it's you. It's our audience. 
Without you, the audience, we would not have anybody to tell our stories to. So I want to say thank you to everybody here today, from our family here at Universal to yours. It has been such a pleasure to have you come and ride with us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon for our 60th anniversary celebrations. If you're one of our annual past members, hey, it's good to see you again. And if you're not yet a past member, don't even sweat it. You can always become one by visiting one of our upgrade box offices or kiosks out in the park or on City Walk. And if you're trying to locate one of those, well, check out the app, Universal Studios Hollywood. It makes navigating the theme park a breeze. There, find our hours of operation, as well as, uh, well, today we close at 7, as well as all the latest and greatest information and updates about the theme park itself. Last but not least, if you liked any of those titles I mentioned, any of those titles now scrolling on screen, you can find them all and where to purchase them at www.uphe.com. But all right, now is a great time to gather up your personal belongings. Remember to recycle those 3D glasses. And before I say goodbye, well, there's one more person we haven't heard from in a hot minute. Well, I can't believe it. We've made it to the end of our tour, you guys. How about... Dimitri. And... One. Weren't they the best? Hey, before we go, I'd like to sing you a little song I made up. I was just five years old. It's called Tram Pastor. We had a real good time together But now the ride is done We saw some crazy cool stuff And we had a lot of fun home back to the theme park so once again gather up those personal belongings uh, remain seated until the tram comes to a full stop and don't forget to recycle those 3d glasses as always my name is dimitri i've been your fabulous studio tour guide your world-class driver has been won your studio tour ambassadors will be releasing you from the tram shortly and if you want to ask any questions or just say hi i'll be hanging out by the digital display board until next time then as we say here in hollywood that is a wrap so bye